In this video, I'll be covering both degradation and biosynthesis of the 20 common amino acids, which primarily take place in the liver. Amino acid catabolism accounts for only about 10 to 15 percent of human body's energy production, much less active than glycolysis and fatty acid oxidation. The catabolic pathways of all 20 amino acids ultimately converge to form only six major products all of which enter the citric acid cycle. Amino acids can be classified into three types based on their catabolic product. Glucogenic amino acids can be degraded to pyruvate, alpha-ketoglutarate, succinyl-CoA, fumarate, and or oxaloacetate, shown in orange. Since oxaloacetate can be reconverted to phosphoenolpyruvate by phosphoenolpyruvate carboxykinase, glucogenic amino acids can be reconverted to glucose through gluconeogenesis. On the other hand, ketogenic amino acids can be degraded to acetoacetyl-CoA and or acetyl-CoA shown in green, which can be converted to ketone bodies in the liver. Note that since pyruvate dehydrogenase is irreversible, acetyl-CoA and acetoacetyl-CoA cannot be reconverted to glucose through gluconeogenesis. The third type of amino acid is both glucogenic and ketogenic, shown in the color tan. Six amino acids are degraded in whole or in part to pyruvate. The side chain of tryptophan can be cleaved to produce alpha-ketoadipate and alanine, which can interconvert with pyruvate by alanine aminotransferase, abbreviated as AAT, which requires the coenzyme pyridoxal phosphate or PLP. There are two catabolic pathways for threonine. The minor one in humans involves oxidation by threonine dehydrogenase, abbreviated as DEH, which is coupled to the reduction of NAD plus to NADH followed by cleavage by ligase, which produces glycine and acetyl-CoA. Glycine is then converted to serine by the enzyme serine hydroxymethyltransferase, abbreviated as SHMT, which requires pyridoxal phosphate and a 1-carbon donor, methylene tetrahydrofolate, which is in turn converted to tetrahydrofolate, abbreviated as THF. Glycine can also undergo oxidative decarboxylation by glycine cleavage enzyme, abbreviated as GCE also known as glycine synthase, producing carbon dioxide and ammonium ion. This reaction is coupled to the reduction of NAD plus to NADH, and tetrahydrofolate serves as a one-carbon acceptor. Serine dehydratase, abbreviated as DH, then removes both the alpha amino group and beta hydroxyl group of serine, which also requires the cofactor pyridoxal phosphate to produce pyruvate. Finally, cysteine can also be degraded to pyruvate in two steps. One removes the sulfur atom and the other is a transamination reaction. From these pathways, we can see that tryptophan, alanine, threonine, glycine, serine, and cysteine can all enter the citric acid cycle through pyruvate. Three amino acids can be degraded to acetyl-CoA. As mentioned earlier, threonine is degraded to both glycine and acetyl-CoA making it both ketogenic and glucogenic. Two of the branching amino acids, leucine and isoleucine, can also be degraded to acetyl-CoA through a series of reactions. Catabolic pathways of the three branching amino acids share the first two enzymes. Phaline, isoleucine, and leucine first undergo transamination reaction catalyzed by branching amino transferase, abbreviated as BCAT, with alpha-ketoglutarate to produce glutamate and alpha-keto acids. The alpha-keto acids then undergo oxidative decarboxylation by branched-chain alpha-keto acid dehydrogenase complex, abbreviated as BCKDC, which is analogous to alpha-ketoglutarate dehydrogenase complex from the citric acid cycle, as well as pyruvate dehydrogenase complex, which I've covered in my previous video about fates of pyruvate. Genetic defect in BCKDC leads to maple syrup urine disease which causes vomiting, convulsions, mental retardation, and early death. The subsequent oxidation of the derivatives of leucine and phaline resemble the four repeating steps in beta oxidation as well as the last four steps of the citric acid cycle. Ultimately, phaline is degraded to propanyl-CoA, isoleucine is degraded to both acetyl-CoA and propanyl-CoA, whereas leucine is degraded to both acetyl-CoA and acetoacetate. From these reactions, we see that threonine, isoleucine, and leucine can be degraded into acetyl-CoA. The acetoacetate derived from leucine is subsequently converted to acetoacetyl-CoA by beta transferase. Besides leucine, four other amino acids can also be degraded to acetoacetyl-CoA. 
As mentioned earlier, tryptophan is degraded to alanine and alpha keto adipate, which can be converted to acetoacetyl-CoA through five steps. Lysine can also be degraded to acetoacetyl-CoA through alpha keto adipate. Phenylalanine is converted to tyrosine by phenylalanine hydroxylase, which is a mixed function oxidase that is coupled to the reduction of oxygen to water and also requires the cofactor tetrahydrobiopterin, abbreviated as BH4, which is oxidized to dihydrobiopterin, abbreviated as BH2. BH2 can then be reduced back to BH4 by dihydrobiopterin reductase, which is coupled to the oxidation of NADPH or NADH to NADP plus or NAD plus. Genetic defects in phenylalanine hydroxylase results in phenylketonuria, abbreviated as PKU, which causes neonatal vomiting and mental retardation. In individuals with PKU, phenylalanine is converted to phenylpyruvate instead, which accumulates in blood and tissues and are excreted in urine. The symptoms of PKU can be prevented by limiting the consumption of phenylalanine. Tyrosine produced from phenylalanine is further degraded into homogentisate by tyrosine aminotransferase followed by dioxygenase. Homogentisate is then oxidized to maleoacetate by homogentisate 1,2-dioxygenase. Genetic defects in homogentisate 1,2-dioxygenase results in alkaptonuria, which causes dark pigment in urine and can lead to arthritis later on. This is also the enzyme that led to Archibald Garrett's hypothesis of inborn error of metabolism, linking an inheritable trait and an enzyme, an important milestone in molecular biology. Ultimately, phenylalanine and tyrosine degrade to fumarate and acetoacetate, which is converted to acetoacetyl-CoA. From these reactions, we see that leucine, lysine, tryptophan, phenylalanine, and tyrosine can all be degraded to acetoacetyl-CoA. Phenylalanine and tyrosine can also be degraded into fumarate. Four amino acids can be degraded to succinyl-CoA. As I mentioned earlier, valine and isoleucine are degraded to propanyl-CoA, which is a three-carbon acyl compound that can also be derived from all-chain fatty acids, which will be covered in a future video. Propanyl-CoA first undergoes carboxylation to D-methylmalonyl-CoA, followed by a primerization to L-methylmalonyl-CoA. Lastly, methylmalonyl-CoA mutase converts L-methylmalonyl-CoA to succinyl-CoA. This reaction requires the coenzyme B12. I mentioned earlier that minor catabolic fate of threonine is pyruvate. The major catabolic pathway of threonine involves the removal of alpha amino group and beta hydroxyl group by threonine dehydratase, abbreviated as DH, which requires the cofactor PLP, producing alpha ketobutyrate and ammonium ion. This reaction is analogous to serine dehydratase, which converts serine to pyruvate. Alpha ketobutyrate then undergoes oxidative decarboxylation by alpha keto acid dehydrogenase, which produces propanyl CoA. This reaction is analogous to branching alpha keto acid dehydrogenase mentioned earlier. Methionine can be converted to homocysteine through the activated methyl cycle, which will be covered in a future video. Cystathionine beta synthase, abbreviated as CBS, then combines homocysteine with serine to form cystathionine, which is subsequently cleaved by cystathionine gamma lyase, abbreviated as CTH to form ammonium ion, cysteine, and alpha ketobutyrate. Both reactions also require the cofactor PLP. Alpha ketobutyrate is then converted to propanyl CoA, which is also ultimately catabolized to succinyl CoA to enter the citric acid cycle. From these pathways, we see that two of the branching amino acids, valine and leucine, as well as threonine and methionine, can all be degraded to succinyl CoA. Only two amino acids enter citric acid cycle through oxaloacetate. The enzyme asparaginase catalyzes the hydrolysis of asparagine to aspartate which undergoes transamination with alpha-ketoglutarate to produce glutamate and oxaloacetate by aspartate aminotransferase, abbreviated as AST. The transamination reaction once again requires the cofactor PLP. Lastly, five amino acids enter citric acid cycle through alpha-ketoglutarate. Glutaminase catalyzes the hydrolysis of glutamine to glutamate in a similar fashion as asparaginase. Glutamate then undergoes an oxidative deamination reaction to produce alpha-ketoglutarate, which is catalyzed by glutamate dehydrogenase and coupled to the reduction of NAD plus to NADH or NADP plus to NADPH. The ammonium group along with ammonium ion derived from serine and threonine dehydratase then enters the urea cycle which I've covered in my previous video. Histidine can be converted to glutamate in four steps. 
Arginine is first hydrolyzed to ornithine and urea by arginase during the urea cycle. Then ornithine undergoes transamination reaction with alpha ketoglutarate by ornithine gamma aminotransferase, abbreviated as OAT, to produce glutamate and glutamate gamma semialdehyde, which is subsequently oxidized by glutamate semialdehyde dehydrogenase which is coupled to the reduction of NAD plus to NADH or NADP plus to NADPH. Proline is first oxidized to pyroline 5-carboxylate, abbreviated as P5C, by proline oxidase, which is coupled to the reduction of oxygen to water. P5C is then hydrolyzed to glutamate gamma semialdehyde, which opens the cyclic structure. From these pathways, we can see that aspartate and asparagine are degraded to oxaloacetate, while glutamate, glutamine, histidine, arginine, and proline are degraded to alpha-ketoglutarate. Now that I've covered the catabolic pathways of all 20 amino acids, I'll summarize which ones are glucogenic, ketogenic, or both. Only two amino acids are strictly ketogenic, leucine, which degrades to both acetyl-CoA and acetoacetyl-CoA, and lysine, which degrades to acetoacetyl-CoA. Five amino acids are both glucogenic and ketogenic, including all the aromatic amino acids. Phenylalanine and tyrosine are degraded to both acetyl-CoA and fumarate, while tryptophan is degraded to pyruvate and acetoacetyl-CoA. One of the branching amino acids, isoleucine, is degraded to both acetyl-CoA and succinyl-CoA. Lastly, threonine is degraded to acetyl-CoA and pyruvate in the minor catabolic pathway, and to succinyl-CoA in the major catabolic pathway. Besides these seven amino acids, all the rest of the amino acids are strictly glucogenic, including most nonpolar amino acids, glycine, alanine, valine, methionine, and proline. Most polar and charged amino acids, aspartate, asparagine, glutamate, glutamine, serine, arginine, and histidine. Now I'll cover the biosynthesis of amino acids. Humans lack enzymes to synthesize certain amino acids and must derive them from diet. These amino acids are known as essential amino acids, which will be marked in yellow. Many non-essential amino acids are derived from some reversible pathways in amino acid degradation. Alpha-ketoglutarate can undergo transamination by aspartate amino transferase to form glutamine, which can be converted to glutamine by glutamine synthetase, which is coupled to the hydrolysis of ATP to ADP. Glutamate can also be converted to glutamate gamma semialdehyde by reversing the dehydrogenation reaction. Glutamate gamma semialdehyde can then convert to ornithine by transamination reaction and produce arginine through the urea cycle. Glutamate gamma semialdehyde can also be converted to P5C and reduced to proline by P5C reductase, which is coupled to the oxidation of either NADPH to NADP+, or NADH to NAD+. From these pathways, we see that glutamate, glutamine, proline, and arginine can be synthesized from alpha-ketoglutarate. Oxaloacetate can undergo transamination by aspartate amino transferase to form aspartate, which can be converted to asparagine by the enzyme asparagine synthetase, which is coupled to the hydrolysis of ATP to AMP as well as deamination of glutamine to glutamate. In bacteria, aspartate can also serve as a precursor to methionine, threonine, and lysine which are essential amino acids for humans. Alanine can be synthesized from pyruvate by the reversible alanine amino transferase. In bacteria, pyruvate also serves as a precursor to the three branching amino acids, isoleucine, leucine, and valine, which are essential amino acids for humans. In bacteria, the aromatic amino acids can be synthesized from the glycolysis intermediate, phosphoenolpyruvate, abbreviated as PEP, and erythrose-4-phosphate, which is the intermediate of pentose phosphate pathway, abbreviated as E4P. Phosphoenolpyruvate and erythrose-4-phosphate can be converted to the intermediate shikimate and chorismate through many steps. Chorismate in turn serves as a precursor to biosynthesis of tryptophan, phenylalanine, and tyrosine. Note that tyrosine can be synthesized from phenylalanine by the enzyme phenylalanine hydroxylase, which I covered earlier in the video. Therefore, only tryptophan and phenylalanine are essential amino acids for humans. In all organisms, serine, cysteine, and glycine can be synthesized from 3-phosphoglycerate. First, 3-phosphoglycerate is oxidized to 3-phosphohydroxypyruvate, 
by the enzyme phosphoglycerate dehydrogenase, which is coupled to the reduction of NAD plus to NADH. 3 phosphohydroxypyruvate then undergoes transamination reaction by phosphoserine amino transferase, abbreviated as PSAT, to form 3 phosphoserine, which is subsequently hydrolyzed to serine by phosphoserine phosphatase. Serine can be converted to glycine by serine hydroxymethyltransferase, abbreviated as SHMT, which is the reverse reaction of glycine metabolism that I mentioned earlier, which involves the cofactor tetrahydrofolate. In mammals, serine can then be converted to cysteine by cystathionine beta synthase and cystathionine gamma lyase, which are part of the catabolic pathway of methionine to succinyl-CoA that I've covered earlier in the video. Lastly, in bacteria, histamine can be derived from glucose 6-phosphate. First, glucose 6-phosphate can be converted to ribose 5-phosphate through the pentose phosphate pathway. Ribose 5-phosphate can then be converted to phosphoribosyl pyrophosphate, abbreviated as PRPP by PRPP synthetase, with ATP serving as the donor of two phosphate groups. PRPP is then converted to histamine through a series of reactions. PRPP can also serve as a precursor to nucleotide biosynthesis, which will be covered in a future video. Now I've covered both the synthesis and degradation of 20 common amino acids. The biosynthesis of most non-essential amino acids in mammals share a similar pathway as amino acid degradation. There are a total of 9 essential amino acids that can be synthesized by humans and needed to be obtained through diet, including all the branching amino acids valine, leucine, and isoleucine that are derived from pyruvate in bacteria, two of the aromatic amino acids tryptophan and phenylalanine, which are derived from phosphoenolpyruvate and erythrose-4-phosphate. Threonine, methionine, and lysine are derived from aspartate in bacteria, and histamine is derived from glucose 6-phosphate. Lastly, note that amino acid metabolism heavily relies on PLP-linked enzymes, including various amino transferases such as alanine amino transferase, aspartate amino transferase, ornithine amino transferase, and phosphoserine amino transferase. Other PLP-linked enzymes include serine and threonine dehydratase, abbreviated as DH, serine hydroxymethyltransferase, abbreviated as SHMT, and cystathionine beta synthase or CPS, and cystathionine gamma lyase or CTH.